Hello and welcome to today's video. So it's been a while since I've posted anything. A couple good reasons for that. Reason number one, we moved. <laughs> reason number two, I am now a dad. So that's really, really cool. Um, yeah, so sleep deprivation is a thing. Uh, just really been, haven't had time. Uh, I can go into like the moving process and everything that we did and getting all the workbenches, everything all set back up and electrical and plumbing and lighting and everything, but that's not for this video. This video, we've got an AMC 325, serial number 1435, in for test evaluation and repair. Uh, customer says that uh, it has problems starting, uh, motor's really jerky. Now I've gone ahead and already tested it and it does work perfectly fine so I can demonstrate that here we'll put it in gear get a little bit of throttle and you'll see she takes off nice and smooth yep perfect no jerkiness at all so that was in forward and we'll go ahead and flip it in reverse and same thing go a little quicker but yeah so the, the drive works perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with it. So go ahead and shut that down. <clears throat> Let that spin to the bottom. So what's going on is it's anytime the motor is like, you know, just being really jerky and it has issues. And, but once it gets going, it starts working kind of a thing. It's usually the encoder that's the problem. It's either the encoder board or the sensor or the disc itself. And nine times out of ten, it's the spacing between the, the encoder disk and the encoder sensor. And you can adjust it all you want. It probably still won't work because the motors are, these things are 20 plus years old now. They've got a lot of miles on them. Now, on a Selectria E10, the trucks, like mine, it has belt drive. So you notice it's just got this pulley on here. Belt drive pulley. It's cogged belt. Gates polychain. And that just goes over to a big sprocket. And then there's another motor that also goes to the sprocket. And it's like at a, I don't know, it's like 13, 14 inch diameter uh, sprocket that these guys drive. And that puts, it's purely a, a radial load. Like there's no load on it at all axially. So these things will last forever because we just have the bearings in here. I think the manual says you're supposed to replace the bearings in the motor at 50,000 miles. Um, keep in mind, these puppies, they're, they're spinning at 12,000 RPM, so it, it does rack up the revolutions on them. But that's literally the only thing you have to do on the, on the truck motors. Now, on the Selectria Force motors, they've got a splined helical shaft here. And that causes a whole different kind of a problem. Um, so, when you go into forward... This is, you know, spinning a gear. It's, I think it's about five or six inches around. It spins that. This imparts, but, you know, that torque, because it's a helically ground gear, causes the shaft to move axially. And this, mo this bearing that's on here is not designed to handle axial forces. It's only designed to handle radial fo forces. You can see they've beefed it up. It's got a, this has a different face on it. This is machined. You can see the machining marks on it. Um, it's got a gasket here because it gets sealed like this whole thing is filled with oil in the gearbox. So they replaced the, the front motor bearing here that's on this. They replaced this whole cap and this, this big bearing here is now the new front bearing. And that's because it's pushing against this really big gear. So there's a lot of force involved. When you go into regen or reverse, the same thing happens, but now the thrust is in the opposite so you end up with a lot of radial thrust. And so you accelerate and then you regen, accelerate, regen, accelerate, regen. You do that over thousands of miles. It causes this bearings to kind of waller out. And you get a lot of axial play that you shouldn't have. And I, I think I can show it here. I've kind of, if I scrape off, so there's, you know, a lot of oil residue on here, but see if I scrape it down to where it's a line, right? Can you see that? You can see that line? And I'll see if I can do, just hold that here. So I'm gonna actually just push and pull on the shaft and you'll actually see this move. So this is how much play 
Do you see that? See it moving? It doesn't seem like much. But as the motor gets older, a lot more miles on it, that starts getting worse. To where the sensor is expecting the target to be a millimeter away. And when you start getting outside of that range, it starts having trouble seeing the disc. And so you got that shaft that runs through here, right? That goes to the disc here. And this distance needs to be a millimeter away. And so when it stops being able to see that, it starts having problems. And that's what causes them to get jerky and act funny. Like here, I'm gonna, I don't know. I don't, I don't think this will show up well. Uh, see if I can get it. Yeah, okay, so we're gonna watch the gap between that and there. I'm gonna do the same thing where I was just moving the, uh, the shaft forward and back. Let's see if we can, without spinning it. Here, let me get it right on the edge there. There you go. Well, it's hard to tell, but it is it is moving. I can't get the angle right. And that's what's going on, is is this, this disc is moving in and out of the range of this sensor board. And now it's got a little adjustment screw on there. You might be able to adjust it out, get it to where it's reading the disc really well. But as soon as you do a hard regen or a hard acceleration, you might shift the whole motor shaft again and have to readjust it. So it's one of those things where you pretty much... If you're really having a lot of trouble and you can't quite adjust it, it's time to replace the bearings. And you're going to have to replace the one that's in the back of the motor and this guy, this big one on the front here. Um, I don't know if they're standard bearings. I don't actually have a Selectria Force. It's got the numbers on it right here, so I'm sure that that, that describes it and you can get a replacement. Hey, it's made in the USA. That's good. If it, um, but that's what's going on, is, is these bearings are wore out, and they're not designed for this axial load. And the reason they do a um, helical cut is for noise. If it was straight cut across here, we wouldn't have the axial problem. All the thrust would be in a radial, which this bearing is designed for. But it would be really loud. Um, if you ever hear a manual transmission car in reverse, or even some automatic, uh, cars, if you put them in reverse, you'll hear this gear whine. That is because the reverse gear, which isn't used very often to save money, it's just straight cut. The helical cut ones are much quieter because if you look, imagine there's another gear here. See how they're, they're helical like that? So you actually have, if you were to draw a line across here, you'll actually see that there's one, two, three, three to four contact spots at any one time. And so if you imagine this is spinning, this, the contact slides across here when it interfaces with the other gear as it rotates, and that means there's, there's constant pressure. So when we fall off the edge of this one, it's taken up by the next guy already, and so on and so forth. So it's nice and smooth. You get an even force the entire way, so you don't get that gear whine that you would get with a straight cut gear. But that's, that's the only reason why they do that, is the helicals to make them quieter, which in an electric vehicle is really good. The problem is, we're getting this axial thrust, and it just this bearing just can't handle the axial thrust. The, the correct way to do it would have been to have a, a helical cut, but the V-shape, where it's halfway cut this way, cut that way, usually what they do is they just take two gears, um, about half that size, cut it the one way, cut it the opposite and then mate them together so that they make that V pattern and then they would have had to done that to the other gear and then there wouldn't be any axial it, it would all have been contained um, that way as well but again that's a more expensive process so this is the not the cheapest way it's optimized for noise but it does result in in the bearings having a lot of axial load which causes them to waller out or, you know, just, they just get a lot of axial play. And when that happens, the encoder cannot stay true to the disc any, or the encoder disc cannot stay true to the sensor anymore and starts missing signals. So it moves in a little bit You'll, and it just, it just has issues starting. But, um, yeah, that's, 
And and the reason why it, it jerks is because it it moves, causes the shafts to come out a little bit, sensor loses where it's at, it goes back in, causes the system to bump a little bit now that it sees it again, it moves out, you know, so you end up with this dump 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 dump. And if you were to take the cover off, you could probably even see it moving just ever so slightly every time it it, it kind of cogs over because you're going open loop. It can't see the the sensor board can't see the disc anymore. But that's what's going on. Um, that's I think that's what you're going to have to fix uh, when you have this kind of an issue. Anyways, this this video ended up being really long. But uh, yeah. Anyways, thanks for watching. Bye.